Hello and welcome to another exciting Max 8 tutorial. This is tutorial number 21, Groovin' with the Groove. Um, those of you who were here for tutorial 20 might remember that uh, we had built all this beautiful stuff in the patch here and you can see very active over here on the left we have our little recording device with a live gain on it and uh, record um, and we've named our record uh, tilde Buffy McBuffer. I should say that I have named it Buffy McBuffer. If anyone in my class hands in something named Buffy McBuffer, I will freak McFreak out. Um, please name it your own name. Don't forget that. And also remember that the name is very specific. It's how we locate things in Max. It's like giving it a serial number and you have to have exactly the same name down here on Groove so that Groove can access the file of record when record makes that file. And also down here, Buffy McBuffer is the name of this buffer. And a buffer is a place, it's a allotted memory for storing sound. So now that we've gotten that out of the way yet again, um, oh, let's just go ahead and record something. Oh, hello, this is uh, tutorial 21, Groovin' with Groove. Aren't you glad you're here? And we can um, just uh, quickly double click on this and we can see that that has recorded into this little um, buffer window and you see it says Buffy McBuffer up here. That's because there is a buffer named Buffy McBuffer on my computer, not yours, and um, that's this buffer down here. Okay, let's put that away for a minute and talk about Groove and what Groove does. So Groove is it plays back samples and it can play them back faster, slower, and it can pitch shift them up and down. So what we're hoping to do is do some interesting stuff with that. But uh, what do we have going on over here? We have a signal that drives groove and we control the speed, the rate of that signal by how fast the signal goes using this slider here. Make sure you always have decimal points coming out of these boxes and out of this slider or it won't work, right? So this is the most common problem that everybody has in Max is that they put integer boxes here when they need float boxes. So make sure you've got float boxes here. Um, here in the middle we have a, a range slider and that allows you to pick out pieces of the sample. Wait, we'll get right back to that. And over here we have the pitch shifter and also another slider here. Again, you can see the decimals. It's saying pitch shift, this string value, so that decimal value will be going in there. Great! So without further ado, I think we could just hit go and it should go. Oh, hello, this is uh, tutorial 21, Groovin' with Groove. Aren't you glad uh-huh. And it cut me off a little bit there. That you can see because the range finder here doesn't go all the way across. So if I put it here and then play it. Oh, hello. This is, oh um, it's tutorial starting at the Groove. beginning. Aren't you glad? But if we put it on loop and then play it um, from here. Here we go. 922. Duh. <laughs> And we also built in a whole bunch of um, presets so that we can just check the various speeds. Oops, I didn't, I didn't save my presets. Oh no. Well, that oh, one seems hello, to work. This is, oh, hello. 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 This is. Oh, hello. This is... Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, I got... is... Where's the stop? Oh, we this built a stop. Good. Oh. Stop it. Now, um, that is all very well and good. 
But so thinking about Groove, what we realize is that we have something that something that's capable of playing back samples. And if we could do that fairly accurately, meaning we could shift the pitch fairly accurately, we could actually play it as a music almost. And to do that, though, we'd like to have several different voices. So let's just see if we can work our way in that direction um, right now. So let's do a little tiny bit of housekeeping here. Um, unlock your patcher and move old Buffy McBuffer down to the corner and move all this stuff down to the down here. And let's move whoops this stuff over here I always feel bad about doing too much housekeeping but uh, there we are so now we're ready for a keyboard so let's go ahead um, and open uh, another object here and what you can do uh, make sure your patcher is unlocked and what you're going to do is add a B patcher. So it's just type N and you get a new object. Type BP, you get B patcher. There it is right there. We'll give that a little uh, double click there. And we got our B patcher and you see it turns into this beautiful blue thing. So what we want to do is highlight it and then come over here to the inspector, which has mysteriously closed go look for a patcher file and um, I may have to root around a bit here because as you can see I make a lot of uh, <laughs> max patches but way down here I have uh, keyboard Johnny just waiting for me your keyboard is keyboard your namey not keyboard Johnny there it is and we open it and this B patcher is now associated with that file. So if you change the name of the file, B patcher can't find it. So just keep that in mind. So let's um, make this big enough to contain the keyboard. There it is. And we'll move the whole thing up here. And uh, let's just make sure it's working. So I'm going to lock my patcher. That's Command E. And I'm going to turn the volume up. And I'm going to tell it to output to my audio units uh, downloadable oh what is it downloadable something or other synth one because I'm on a Mac if you're on a PC it's probably a GS wavetable okay so there it is and I'm gonna just play some keys and see what happens I'm gonna turn it up a little bit so you can hear it a little muted, but uh, we can we can hear it. Maybe it's because I have my volume so low. There we go. Okay, and we could even play a little something and just record it for the moment here. Okay, there we go. Right, so that you notice that's one and a half times higher. We can turn this down and it'll be lower. Okay, enough of that. So what we're going to do with this keyboard that we handily have here, this is um, in a previous tutorial, you can make this or um, you can get your input from another, uh, let's say you have your keyboard around, It'll all work out the same. I just like having this one here as a graphic demonstration. So what we're going to do is send the information from the keyboard out through the MIDI driver on a Mac that ends up being IAC driver. I'm not sure what it ends up being on a PC, but it's essentially it's bus one, which is a fancy way of saying a MIDI channel. There we go. Now you want to come over here. Um, unlock your patcher, type in N, oops, I locked my patcher, um, type in N, and type note, in is what you're looking for, that's note in, you can double click on it or just hit return, whatever, 
There it is. Hello, Nodin. And um, what is it that Nodin is going to do? It is going to listen for MIDI notes out there on the buses, and then it's going to output them here. So let's just type the letter I. You get an integer box. There's one. I'm going to just type an I again. And there's two. And locking my patcher. Now, without doing anything, it listens to all MIDI notes on all channels. And we can see if it works. But the way to check what MIDI uh, bus it's listening to is with it locked to double click on it. And you'll see all devices by channel. Well, I mean, let's be selective. We just set the the uh, keyboard to bus one, so let's put this to bus one. And now we'll just click over here so that we're not over there. And uh, try typing uh, ASDF on our board here. Um, and as you can see, 55, 122. Now I'm going to let off, what do I have my finger on? The G, the G uh, key on my keyboard, and zero. So if you're out there and you're not in my class and you're just using your keyboard that's connected, you're going to see these numbers, but you're not going to hear anything. Why? Because they're not connected to anything. We're going to connect these eventually down to groove in a fashion and use these to modify the note and also the volume. That's the idea. So that's where we're going here. Sound good? Good. So let's just give ourselves um, a little space here. I'm going to unlock the patcher, move these up a little bit, and now we're going to um, try a new object out here. It's called a MIDI to frequency. It's easy to remember. They like to make things memorable in Max. Type an N, get a new object, and then just type M for MIDI, and then 2, uh, you see it's already popped up, F. MIDI to frequency, and we'll connect that up. And now, very specific here, are we going to type an I? No, we're going to type the letter F to get a float box, a box with a decimal. Okay. And let's just quick um, lock our patchers again and play our keyboard for a minute here. Um, see if we can get middle C. Uh, there it is. Okay, so you can see this flashing on and off here. There's me, uh, middle C on, middle C off. And here is the um, frequency of middle C. So... If what we want to do is make notes that are lower than middle C go down, and notes that are higher than middle C go up, I'm just uh, playing up and down the keyboard here. I'm going to just uh, hit middle C again. What we can do is divide this number by, uh, divide whatever number ends up here by 261.6. So I'm going to unlock my patcher. And I'm going to forget about this number, because what I want is the C. And I'm going to type a new object, uh, forward slash, which is the division thing. And this has to be a, um, a 261.6, I believe, is middle C. To tell you the truth, unless you're really going to, you know, follow this thing around with a guitar tuner or something, or a piano tuner, it doesn't really matter. It just should be in there, something around there, so it ends up being close to keyboard pitch. So now when we do this, we're going to say whatever comes out here is going to be divided by 261.6, and that will give us a... a, a uh, a decimal ratio that we can run in to pitch shift. Okay, does that make sense? So I'm going to type F again just so we can see what it is. All right, so I'm now going to lock my patcher and play my keys up to middle C. Da, 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 da. There's middle C divided by 261 is 1.0, so at least we're correct that far. 
And then now let's go um, over here and there's middle C. So we're going to want to play that C, which I think is the A key, at least on my keyboard. There it is playing that and it gets 130 and notice that it says 0.5. Those of you familiar with the harmonic series will realize that every time you go up an octave, you double a number, and every time you go down an octave, you cut that number in half. So we, we got it. We nailed it right on. This is 0.5, which is half of middle C. Now we'll play middle C. And there it is. And if we were to go and click our octave thing up here, up one full octave, look at that. We get a 523, that is two times higher. Just genius, everything working so well. And so, what now, unlocking our patcher, what do we do with that? Well, what if we just run that right smack in the top of the pitch shift? There it is. And I'm just moving that out to the side. That's a nice little resetting device here. Move this out of the way. Okay, so now when we're typing on our keys, locking our patcher here, and I'm typing on my keys, you can see that this thing's climbing up and down, right? And if we had something to listen to, let's um, record something that's nice-ish to listen to. I don't mean nice. You know what I mean. La, 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 la. I know, it's operatic, right? So let's just say... Uh, let's put this on loop so it just keeps playing over and over and over and we'll make this a little bigger so it plays a lot of it and we'll start it playing. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. And then we can play up the keyboard a little. You get the idea, right? Okay, where's that stop thing? Okay, so absolutely excellent. We are accomplishing an amazing thing here, which is we're essentially building a keyboard sampler. So now the trick is going to be to get the um, this velocity to be something that makes sense for live gain. Now this is a little tiny bit trickier, but let's just uh, do a quick look here. If we unlock our patcher and we click on the live gain and then we come over here to the, oh my goodness, so much stuff for live gain. Um, if you scroll on down here, I can't believe the amount of stuff here. We're looking for its range, and um, there it is. Sorry. Here's the range, and it is negative 70.0 to 6 positive, right? We have a way to... Um, to scale things to those numbers, and that is we'll just come over here back to our patcher and type um, new object for uh, which is called scale. And what we want <clears throat> is to know what the input is. The input is going to be between 0 and 127, and now the output as we previously saw there, was negative 70.0, that's important, to positive 6. And um, whatever comes out of here now, it on the MIDI scale, which will be 0 to 127, will run the live gain up and down between its minimum and maximum point as well. Does that make perfect sense to everyone? I hope so. But you know, we're going to... Um, add in one thing before that, which is essentially this. When when this number comes in, if it's a zero, 
we want it to stop playing this. We want it to hit the stop button. And um, if it's not a zero, then we want it to hit the play button. Uh, we want it to start playing wherever the looping points are, right? So, or we, we could have it start playing at zero, either one. But, um, so let's uh, make a new object here, N, and we are going to say select zero. And the nice thing about using select zero is that um, everything except zero will come out this side. So we can run this in here into the select zero and sorry, I want to move this over so that this all kind of makes sense graphically. Anything that's not zero is going to come out here and then we shall see what it is here by typing an F and then we will know. Okay. If it's anything but zero, uh, excuse me, if it is zero, it's going to bang on this and hit the stop key. And if you don't like this line stretched all the way across your patcher, just hit the old command Y and it'll make it into something that's more easy to deal with. There we go. All right. Now, and let's take this and hook it up. Um, I like to use segmented patch cords, so I do it this way. Oop, I can't, I can't, I must. Um, down here to the, there. That's terrible. There we go. I just hit Command Y to make it do it by itself because I, I made it crooked. There we go. So now anything except a zero gets scaled and turns the volume up. Anything that is, is a zero hits stop. But we also want that anything that is not a zero uh, triggers this and turns it on. So let's just connect this uh, not zero part over here, um, oops, sorry, not unlocked, and this one then has to come right on down to here, and I'm just going to do it the quick, easy way of command Y to make that a straight line, and, or you know what I mean, a jointed line, and there we go. So, recapping here, we now have, when the Velocity, which is the same as volume, comes in here. If it's a zero, it gets selected, and that hits this, comes down here, and tells it to stop. If it's anything but a zero, it's going to go down this line and tell this to start at this number. Okay? And also, if it's not a zero, that number gets scaled to something that live gain understands and it turns up and down the volume so it'll work just perfectly with your MIDI organ. Do we believe it's going to work? Of course we believe it's going to work. Um, let's see if it works. It, it works so well I'm almost surprised. We'll go up a couple octaves. We'll go down a couple octaves. We'll turn the speed up. We'll turn the speed down. We'll take a different part of the thing. It's nice. So, um, this is all fabulous. Um, we have a lot of control over this now, but what we don't have, and you can hear this, I'm just going to go to a regular middle of the keyboard here, and I'm going to play three notes in a row. I'll, I'll turn the volume up a little bit so you can hear it. And I want you to hear what happens when I do three keys in a row. 
So it changed notes, but we couldn't hear three voices. I was holding them down the whole time. I'm going to do it again. I will keep holding all three keys down once I play them. So here's one, here's two, here's three. It's a very classic uh, barbershop quartet there, except for the guy singing. Um, but you can also hear that there's only one voice and it just switches to whichever one the last one that was triggered was. So now what we want to do is kind of take this whole groove um, conglomeration here and multiply it to the number of voices that we want. So when a note comes in here, it gets sent to one of, let's just say, six because we, we like that, we've done it before, we can make six, um, let's call them sampling synthesizers, okay? So let's think about how to do that now. What we want to have is some things that are inside of that sampling synthesizer and some things that are outside of that sampling synthesizer. So um, without further ado, I'm going to unlock my patcher. So we've got our patcher unlocked and now we're going to move some stuff around to make this into a respectable, very respectable, mind you, um, very respectable uh, keyboard. So here we go. We got our channel one, channel two. You know, I'm going <clears> to <throat> change the live gain, sometimes you have to go over here and tell it to be vertical. There we go. And um, I, guess, I guess we're going to have to make the uh, these two a little bit smaller. Sort of funny. Ah, how about this? We'll put them on each side of the microphone. That looks that looks cool. Okay, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. Oh, they won't get any smaller. It's okay. It's okay. You can't have everything. All right. Channel one, channel two, live gain, taking up the rest of the space there. Okay, great. And the record button. Whoops, going crazy there. There's the record button. We could probably, oops, 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 could probably get to that later and we'll just put Buffy over here. Now, as I was saying, there's things that we are going to want inside of our sample synth and there are things that we are going to want that are part, that control everything that come out here with the piano, um, with the keyboard part. So um, one of them would be uh, the preset, right? Oh, um, we had preset controlling the tones on this before, you might recall, and we don't want to do that anymore. Now we're going to control them with the keys. So we're going to delete that. Just wanted you to understand why I'm doing it. Um, so we can put this across the top here. Oh, I think it would look really good if it were a single row. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, my God. And we can move this up. Sweet looking, sweet looking. Okay. Then um, we can, um, this is going to be the speed. And before we get too carried away here and drag it off somewhere, I'm going to just stick this over here so it can be load banged someday. Um, what we're going to want to do with things like this is to interrupt this line so that we don't have a line here. We want to transmit, and there's a special object for this that's called send. So type an N, type the letter S, that's for send, and we're gonna, I'm going to call this Buffy speed. You call it your namey speed. Okay. And then the, um, what do you call it? The the other bookend, the other receiver, the receiver for this is um, receive. So I'm going to just duplicate this because sometimes I misspell something, but if you duplicate it, you misspell it exactly the same. And then I just come back and change it to an R. And 
As soon as I do, you'll see this input turn into an output. There it goes, right? So now we take this chord. Well, here, let me just show you what it's doing. This one is going to come here, and this one is going to go here. So this situation is the same as this situation. Of course, you don't want both, so I'm going to delete this patch chord. But it's going to work exactly the same. I'm just going to lock my patcher right now and show you that it does. See? So send and a, and a unique word will find receive and a unique word. Okay. So now we can carry on with our putting things in and putting things out and whatnot. So there we go. There's our new speed. And we can just move this over here. And this stays down here with everything else. What else do we got down here? Oh, we're going to want to um, move this range thing somewhere. It'd be nice if it was on top, not on the bottom. I like it. Here, we'll just take these two and pull them down a little bit. And um, I'm going to put these off to the side. I don't know if I have any use for them. And make this thinner and longer. Just slide it right in there. What do you think? Is that nice looking or what? Maybe a little thinner. I and mean, you don't need that much space to because you do all of it going sideways. So there's our range finder. It kind of gives you a visual impression of doing that. Okay, and then we're going to want a, another send receive pair here. So uh, just type letter N, send your namey. No spaces in these, by the way. Don't put spaces in. It only reacts to the first word. So no spaces. Uh, what was this range? And, oh, range, there's two of them, range min, and then we'll just duplicate that, and then, oh, you're going to like this. Now I'm just going to duplicate both of them. What? Oh, I did it too soon. Wait, I'm going to throw them away. Watch this, watch this action here. We'll change this one to the receive. I know what you're thinking. You're like, John, you're the Elvis of uh, of something. I don't even know what this is. Okay, so now we want these to be max. So there we go. Buffy range max. Buffy range max. And we can save ourselves some time here by... What is this thing doing over here? Oh, it's just showing us what the what the max range is. We we don't really need to know this. I'm just going to delete it there, and we're going to stick this from to through Buffy range max. That's now doing the same thing as that patch cord, and we can move this one down here, and we can move this one over here, and we've got the minimum chord here, or so I think. So we can just do that, and this, there we go, good, good. Um, what else? So that's doing its thing over there, oh, here, here's some. Um, we got, oh, time stretch. Here's a pain. Um, okay, so this, because it's in a truie, needs to be hooked directly to something. If you put in a truie on a send object, it gives you the attributes of the send object, which is, you, you, get, you get the idea. It's kind of stupid. So what we have to do is change this attribute, which is time stretch, into something that's more like loop string one. And it's fairly simple because um, uh, time stretch itself, and this is usually the case with a truies, if you write a message, so I'm typing M and writing 
time stretch. And then space, dollar sign, which is, we say is string one. So now um, whatever comes in here will have to go through time stretch string one. So now we got that and we can throw this away but we do need something to turn it on and off just like we need for loops. So now we've got loops x file there x toggle toggle it's a toggle um, and we're gonna have time stretches and so I'm just gonna duplicate it. I could just type the letter T it would actually be easier and da, 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 da. okay so what we need to do since we're going to put these up here somewhere let's just say is um, we need some sends for these two so type n type send type your namey and what are we working on time stretch I, you don't, it, it could be anything. You could write canary here for, it doesn't really matter. Um, but, and then you duplicate it, then you change one of them to a receive. And then you do that. So these will now communicate automatically. And we need one for the loop. So new object, send, Buffy, loop, option click, duplicate, change the R, change the S to an R. Now it's receiving. Fantastic. There it is. And there it is. Okay. I am almost sure that we have put okay so all of this stuff here here i'm just gonna move this down a little bit so i can get it all in one fell swoop plus all of this stuff except note in we want to be part of our new um, sample synthesizer so let's drag over the whole mess Um, including the live gain, right? But do not, under any circumstances, include the buffer nor the record object, because if you have more than one of those, all hell breaks loose. Oh, pardon my language. So, now hold the shift key down. You have all these selected, and now we're going to get these here. Okay? So all these up here selected, everything over here, not the record, not the, uh, yes, the live gain, but not the uh, easy uh, uh, ADC, and then um, not the buffer. Okay, now we encapsulate it, which you do by going up to here and say encapsulate or shift command E. For those of you on a PC right now doing this, you will know what the secret combination is here. It's probably shift control E or shift option key e, e. I don't know what it is. I don't have a PC. Anyway, let's encapsulate it. <clears throat> Whoa, yes. Ma, ma, ma. It is done. And it also works. And it has proven that it worked. What did we do wrong? Wait. I did something wrong. I'm going to just hit Command Z and Command Z again. There we go. Ma, 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 what did you do? Ah, here's what I did. I included my send for Buffy Loop. I was trying to figure out what happened. Now, I have all these things selected and I don't want to do it again. I'm so lazy that I'm just going to push Shift and click on Buffy Loop. And I could move it out of the way, but I don't have to. And now I'm going to try my secret command, shift, option, uh, shift, command, E, 
and encapsulate it all again. Ma, 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 ma. And it all turns into one big happy patcher. And let's call that big happy patcher Buffy. Nuffy. <laughs> Buffy sample synth, but not Buffy sample synth for you. Just for me. Okay. And now, um, and I'm, because I can see into the future, and this is our plan, we have Buffy sample synth here, and it has everything in it that we need. And what we're going to try to do is have six voices. So when we play this thing, I'm just going to play a note, don't be afraid. Um, I love how it just clicks, it creates things because I just hit the letter F. Um, we want to be able to have six voices. Right now we only have one. So we need six of these. I know how that works, so I'm going to make some minor modifications here that you will like. So lock your patcher, double click Buffy Sample Synth or your namey Sample Synth open. There it is. It is unlocked. And here's our problem. We need one single input and we have two. Okay? This is easy to solve. You've all done it before, but here's here's the trick. Um, we just take the let's just take all this stuff here and move it over here a little bit. Um, yeah, there. Just just give us a little space to work here. Here's going to be our one inlet. We want the information to come in here, be unpacked, and go to these two things. So we're going to create an unpack object. Unpack, not unpuck. Unpack, zero, zero. Because it's MIDI and we know it's going to be in integers. Here's a little trick doesn't work for everything, but it does work for certain things, which is as you're sliding this around, you just push the shift key down and boom, it just slides right in there. Isn't that cool? Okay. And then this output comes over here. This coming in, it will come in as a list. So instead of two separate numbers, the way it used to come in, it's now going to come in as a list and that makes this unnecessary. So we'll just get rid of it. There we go. And now we're going to take it a step further. We're just going to copy everything in here. And you can hit edit, copy. I do command copy. That might be control copy on a PC. And now we open a new patcher by uh, command N again on a PC. So this is a totally new new patcher here. This is not a sub patcher. This is a whole new patcher and we paste that whole mess right in there. So and um, what we're going to do is save it as um, uh, here I'm going to go over near the save as file, save as, and now it's going to be Buffy sample synth. No spaces. Why are we doing this? We're making a free, a standalone patcher for this. And that means anytime we change one of them, oh my goodness, really? Yeah, sure, I'll replace it. I wonder what'll happen. I've done this before. Um, and I should probably have picked a new name, not Buffy. Um, so now that this is a completely free standing patcher, um, anytime you say you change something in here, it will be changed in all of your patchers. And I'll, I'll show you in a minute. But it's a really good thing because if something's wrong, you don't want to have to fix it six times, right? Now, here's the weird part. We just put this away. We saved it, so we'll just put it away. And we come back over here, 
and see this says Buffy sample synth, but it's in brackets. That's because it's a sub patcher. So I'm going to close that, and here it is. Now, technically, I am replacing this object with an entirely new object. So, unlocking our patcher, all I have to do, because I named them so similarly, is delete the P, and you'll see what happens. I delete that up here, and I get this automatic thing. You know how it autom auto fills, and it says, "Hey, there's a patcher called Buffy Sample Synth. You want to use that?" I say, "Oh yeah, I want to use that." So, <laughs> I I love that. It's just like the the big ta-da there. So, <clears throat> so now. But I do want to warn you about something. This is a separate, a separate file from this patcher that you're working on. In my case, it's called 20MA Tut Groove, but yours is probably called something else. And that is a separate file from this keyboard file that our B patcher is referencing. So when you hand this in, you have to include all of those files. Okay, so here we go. Sample synth, right? Now we want six voices. How are we going to do it? We need a special distribution object. And that special distribution object is called poly, which means poly voice. So just type the letter N, type P-O-L-Y, not P-O-L-L-Y, that's the wrong one, just P-O-L-Y, and no tilde also, and then type a space. You type how many voices you want, we're going to go with six, and then this other funny one is, uh, it's called steel mode, which means if you're holding six keys down and you push down a seventh, it will steal from one of those six down that's down and use that to play the new note. It'll take the oldest note and turn it off and turn on a new note. That's steel mode, so we want that. Okay, Polly, there you are. Now, what does Polly do? Polly gets um, pitch or a list with pitch and velocity. Okay, so um, note in delivers pitch and velocity. So we're going to go ahead and connect this, and then this is velocity, and we put velocity in there. We can delete this. It's not useful. Okay, so Polly, in all its cleverness, what it's going to do is it keeps track of when you push a key down, and then when you lift it up, and then it assigns it a number here from 1 through 6. So what we in our super cleverness do is that we pack all that into a list and then we spray it back out. And I, I think you'll get what I'm saying here. So pack 0 space 0 space 0. Okay, so three things coming in. The first thing is going to be what voice is it going to be? So that'll be numbers 1 through 6. This is going to be the pitch, and then this is going to be the velocity. And then it sends all of them out here, um, but we want to send it to six different ones of these. So we're going to type N, get your new object, type spray, and then how many outlets do you want? You want six. Now here's a tricky one. Spray normally starts numbering at zero the way some digital things do, but we don't want it to, so we're going to offset it by one. And then we're also going to put it in list mode by typing an integer here. If you just left it blank, it would be in single digit mode, and it would only do this with one digit. But we're sending a, a, a list out, so it has to be in list mode. So spray 6, offset 1, and in list mode. Okay, and we've got our one outlet here. 
which will be sending out a nice message that'll make a lot of sense to Spray. It'll say, voice number one, and Spray will say, okay, I'm going to send that out number one, or it'll say voice number two. All right, I'll send that out number two. Get my, get the idea here? So then we can take our beautiful sample synths and hook it up here, right? And now the fun begins. I just option click on these and go to town. Um, sometimes I even do, whoops, I don't do that. Sometimes I even do crazy stuff like this. There we go. So all of these have to be hooked up with their inputs coming into each one of them. And it's nice, they've made Mac so it works upside down too. So if you take your left channel here, now hold your uh, shift button down, and then you can just, it'll just keep making extra chords. It's a real time saver. Now, before you get to the last one here, don't do it, don't do it. Let the shift key up. And it won't duplicate another one, or you would be wondering, how am I going to get rid of that? Here, I'm going to move over a little bit so we can see this. Okay, and now <clears throat> we'll do it with the right channel. Here's the first one. Hold my shift key down. Still holding my shift key down. I'm going to purposely keep holding my shift key down here, just to so you understand what a travesty it is when you forget. Oh, great. Now what? I let my shift key up and I can't get rid of this stupid thing, right? What you have to do is either connect it to something and then delete it. That's the worst thing to do. But no matter where you click, it just then it turns into a segmented patch cord. It makes it even worse. On a Mac, you hold Command down, probably Option on a PC, and you just click again and it disappears. So that's how you get rid of that. So believe it or not, people, sorry I got so distracted with that because this is, we're at the super exciting part where we lock our patcher and we see if all six voices are working. Oh my God, it's working just beautifully. And, um, this is interesting too. You, you heard they kind of like get a little out of sync, but if you turn the uh, time stretch on, I believe they'll all stay in sync. You get what I mean? Usually the higher pitched ones end first. I'm going to turn it off now. Listen to them again. Oh, Okay, let's not get too deep into that. So there's on, there's off. Um, Buffy Loop, are you working Buffy Loop? La, la, la. Yeah, I'm still holding the key down and it's not playing. So Buffy Loop is working. Turn it back on. La, 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 la. Very good, very good. Let's uh, see what else we've got for ranges here. Nice. I bet that's really good when it's a... Okay, maybe it's not as good as I'm thinking. What is that doing? Oh, that's the speed. It's going really fast. Um, I'm gonna... Wah! Okay, and then... Oh, you know what's happening is the time stretch is allowing it to... Uh... is um, I think it's not pitch shifting correctly if the time stretch isn't turned on. Well, that is super exciting. So what could possibly be left to do? Um, a couple things. 
Um, one is that we like things to start off well, so I'm going to just push a new object. Oops, I'm going to unlock my patch, push in new, say load bang, <clears throat> and um, this thing eventually receives a size, but at the moment it's not. So we're going to tell it to. Uh, uh, we'll just type a message and put 6,000 on it, and then um, hopefully that will get it started well enough. There we go. And what else needs to be load banked here? This one, it's always good that there is actually some kind of speed, so we'll load bang that too. And what else? I think we should probably load bang the... Um, time stretch. Uh, the way we have it hooked up, maybe it's not the perfect way to do it, but it's probably close enough. Okay, and now that we have all this working, um, we could put some comments in here. Uh, you can just type the letter C and you can put, uh, I usually do these all in caps lock. Excuse me. If they disappear, it means they're not on the top. And then you have to go up here to arrange and say bring to front, top, front, same thing. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to see it. <clears throat> and um, here we go. We need another one here called uh, time stretch. Here's a case where um, well, it's okay if it's in there, right? With some objects, you don't want them on top because they'll actually stop you from being able to click the box or click the speed thing, but um, comments don't stop you, so they're, they're just fine. And then loop, I guess we need a loop. And... Now, an important, well, that doesn't look very good, does it? Or does it? Oh, no, 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 oh, I did it, I did it. I have to hit um, Command and click again. I really wanted to select this and pull it down so that it has a kind of like squared off end here. You know. Okay, and let's... Um, Oh, oh, so we're going to put it in um, presentation mode. So let's select everything. Head right on over here to our inspector. And click the box that says include in presentation. And there you go. Now it's all included in the presentation. We just put it in presentation mode. And look at that. Um, I suppose, let's see here, we'll just close that little inspector there, and we'll just move this up here. It, oh, it's, it's, a uh, it's still unlocked. That's why it's still showing the edges of this. So if you lock it, um, it looks a lot better. But we could even make it look better, and you know how that would be. We'll just open this inspector and hit the patcher diamond, because that deals with everything for the for the whole patcher, and we'll come down here and say, what should the locked background color be? And um, we could uh, pick some nice, not, no, no, uh, something horrible, yes, maybe, something mildly horrible, how about Oh, it's 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 imperfect, but um, you know it vaguely um, works. Let's just go with it. I don't want to spend all day picking out colors here. Okay, and then um, we'll just close that. And oh, we want to um, tell it to also to open in presentation mode, right? So come on, you thing. 
Um, where are you? Where are you? There it is. So you come down to view and say open in presentation mode. You have to do this with all of your patchers that you hand in because I like them to just open right up in presentation mode. So there you have it. Close that. View. Uh, wait, let's put it in the middle here and uh, say define initial fixed window location. There it is. This thing should be all good to go. So all I can say to all of you out there who were waiting to groove with the groove is now you're grooving. <laughs>